Hi, my name is Matthew LaCroix, and I'm an ancient history researcher and writer that specializes in lost civilizations, esoteric teachings, and ancient texts. My primary focus is the preservation of truth in society. So much misinformation and deception has eroded what is an incredible lost history that's happened to humanity. Ancient cataclysms that have wiped out lost civilizations and great secrets that have been kept from most of society. Some believe that truth is not something that's shared across the masses and that everyone has their own truth. But I firmly believe that if one studies the truth in an objective way and looks at everything from across the world, every fact they can get their hands on, that there is an eternal truth that exists. And that truth is what is being challenged right now, is that preservation of truth and spreading that knowledge around the world rather than allowing it to remain hidden with a very select group of individuals. We must remember that without truth, we wouldn't understand anything about our history, who we are, and where we're going. Truth is the most fundamentally important thing that matters. And together, we can make sure that truth is preserved well into the future, and it'll never be lost ever again. Cultures across the world have left behind extensive evidence in ancient texts, monuments, and megalithic structures, explaining that long ago, Advanced civilizations once existed on the Earth that were eventually destroyed by devastating global cataclysms. These lost civilizations understood the secrets of energy, consciousness, mathematics, and even the nature of reality itself. Across the Earth, ancient ruins and megalithic structures such as Saxe Human in Peru, the Temple of Jupiter in Lebanon, or Gobekli Tepe in Turkey have been proven to be far older than what our modern history books are willing to admit. The incredible megalithic site of Gobekli Tepe, located in the southeastern Anatolia region of Turkey, has been radiocarbon dated to be over 11,000 years old. Meanwhile, further to the west in Baalbek, Lebanon, the ancient city of Heliopolis and the Temple of Jupiter contain enormous stone blocks that are in excess of 1,000 tons each. Yet at the same time, most mainstream experts will tell you that these megalithic sites were built less than 5,000 years ago by the Romans, or some nomadic hunter-gatherer group using nothing more than Bronze Age tools. This evidence greatly contradicts what society has been taught about the timeline of human history and helps to paint a far different picture of our past. Not only are the pyramids of Giza far older than what we've been told, but the dynastic pharaohs of Egypt were also incorrectly given credit for their creation. Evidence shows that these magnificent and precise structures were built by a lost civilization who disappeared from Earth's history during the last ice age. When looking at the positions of the constellations of Orion, Leo, and Canis Major 10,500 to 12,000 years ago and accounting for the processional changes that occurred to the Earth, it can be fascinating to learn that both the Great Pyramid and Sphinx perfectly aligned to these star constellations during that time period. For those who don't know, axial precession is caused by the slight wobbling of an astronomical body, which causes its orientation to change over time. This creates what is known as the precession of the equinoxes, or zodiac ages, which represents a cycle of approximately 25,700 years. This dating evidence also correlates strikingly well with the water erosion marks that have been found along the edges of the Sphinx enclosure, which strongly suggests that the true age of these structures is far older than what we've been told, based on the historical rainfall patterns for the region. Ancient cuneiform writings, such as the Sumerian King List and Atrahasis, show that thousands of years ago, advanced civilizations once thrived from the region of the Fertile Crescent of Mesopotamia down to the Great Nile Delta of Egypt, but disappeared suddenly without warning from a great catastrophe that occurred, known as the Deluge. To fully understand the chronological timeline of these advanced civilizations that disappeared long ago, we have to study the evidence left behind all across the world, echoed by nearly every major culture of the past, describing this disastrous flood. Ancient cities like Eridu and Sharupak once existed in southern Mesopotamia near the mouth of the Persian Gulf, but were buried under a mountain of rock and debris after the deluge and became nearly forgotten to time. 
These cities were known as the pre-diluvial cities of Sumer, which means before the flood. It's very important to understand this term and to distinguish these events and how the deluge altered our history and understanding of these advanced cultures of the past. The Great Flood wiped away much of what existed before, causing a reset button on developing civilizations and giving rise to the post-diluvial kingdoms of Sumer, such as the cities of Uruk, Ur, and Kish. The cuneiform tablets of the Atrahasis and Epic of Gilgamesh give the best evidence for this flood, but ancient religions and cultures all across the world have echoed the same story. The Atrahasis cuneiform tablets contain both the creation story of mankind, echoed from the Enuma Elish, as well as the Deluge story and evidence for who Atrahasis was, known by many names, including Zayasudra, Undapishtim, or Noah, and was the king of Shurupak. Both Atrahasis and the city of Shurupak were part of our pre-diluvial history and represent a lost time period, not even taught in school. The Atrahasis epic explains that some of the ancient gods, known as the Anunnaki, decided mankind was being too loud on earth and to create diseases, plagues, and a great cataclysm so that they could be wiped out to cleanse the planet. This is why we see such a stark contrast between the pre-diluvial Sumerian culture and the post-diluvial Sumerian culture. Much of what we consider to be nothing more than a myth is often based on real truth. Tablets like the Sumerian King List prove without a doubt that these kingdoms and mighty civilizations such as Eridu and Shurupak once thrived in the region of Iraq in what's known as the Fertile Crescent which were later completely destroyed and buried by the deluge, nearly erasing all knowledge of their existence. To fully understand who the Sumerian and Babylonian gods were and the events that led to the destruction of these past civilizations, we must look deeper into the cuneiform tablets of the Atrahasis. The Atrahasis is one of the most important writings ever found, containing answers to so many of our questions including mankind's origin story and a detailed account of the catastrophes that struck Earth thousands of years ago. The Atrahasis cuneiform tablets were first discovered in 1849 in the ruins of the library of Ashurbanipal in the ancient city of Nineveh, but other versions have since surfaced from Babylon and Sippar, Iraq, all echoing the same story. The most accurate translation of these tablets was first done by Assyriologist George Smith in 1870 and was later confirmed and refined by Oxford University scholar Stephanie Daly in 1989. The following translation and reading of the Atrahasis is a combination of these two experts. Not three epics had passed, the country became too wide, the people too numerous. Enlil grew restless at their racket listening to their noise. He addressed the great gods. The noise of mankind has become too much. I am losing sleep over their racket. Give the order that Sarupu disease shall break out. Cut off food supplies to the people. Let the vegetation be too scant for their hunger. When the sixth year arrived, the people's looks were changed by starvation. Only one or two households were left. Their faces were covered in scabs like malt. The people stayed alive by holding on to life. Enlil became furious and fetched Enki. We, the great Anuna, all of us, agreed together on a plan. Anu and Adad were to guard above. I, Enlil, was to guard the earth below. Where you went, you were to undo the chain and set us free. You were in charge of control and holding the balance, but instead you gave wisdom to the people and knowledge. Your creations had become too numerous and despoiled the earth. You imposed your loads on man. You bestowed noise on mankind. You slaughtered a god together with his intelligence. You must swear an oath to the end, to create a flood on earth, to wipe away all of life. 
There was one named Atrahasis, whose ear was open to his god Enki. He would speak with his god, and his god would speak with him. Enki made his voice heard to Atrahasis. Dismantle the house, build a boat, reject possessions, and save living things. The boat you will build, roof it like the Abzu, so that the sun cannot see inside it. Make upper decks and lower decks. The tackle must be very strong. The bitumen strong to give strength. Atrahasis received the message and gathered the elders. Everything was complete as instructed. Atrahasis put all of his family on board. Then the face of the weather changed. Rain bellowed from the clouds. Bitumen was brought to seal the door. The winds were raging as Atrahasis cut the rope to release the boat. Then the flood came and no one could see anyone else. They could not be recognized in the catastrophe. The flood roared like a bull, like a wild ass screaming. The winds howled. The darkness was total. There was no sun. For seven days and seven nights, the torrent, storm, and flood came on. The goddess Mami watched and wept. However could I, in the assembly of the gods, have ordered such destruction on them? Nintu was wailing. I have seen and wept over them. Their dead clog the rivers like dragonflies. Shall I ever finish weeping for them? After the noise of the flood had subsided, the warrior Enlil spotted the boat of Atrahasis. He was furious. We the great Anuna, all of us, agreed together on an oath. No form of life should have escaped. How did any man survive the catastrophe? Anu made his voice heard and spoke to the warrior Enlil. Who but Enki would do this? Enki made his voice heard and spoke to the great gods. I did it, in defiance of you. I made sure life was preserved. Exact your punishment from the sinner and whoever contradicts your order. A man survived the catastrophe. Cuneiform tablets from Mesopotamia, along with ice core samples from Greenland and geologic evidence from across the world, strongly suggest that a series of devastating cataclysms occurred on the Earth between 10,500 and 12,800 years ago, leading to rapid melting of the ice caps, global floods, and destructive climate changes. These cataclysms were likely caused by a large solar outburst from the sun, or possibly a comet strike which wiped out many of the ancient civilizations that were present on the planet, causing their existence and memory to become nearly lost to time. A great deal of their knowledge and advanced technology was destroyed in these cataclysms. However, some of the megalithic structures and pyramids they built still remain today. According to the famous philosopher Plato, a sophisticated civilization called Atlantis once existed somewhere southwest of the Straits of Gibraltar in western Africa on a string of circular islands that formed a large central landmass. These writings, known as the Timaeus and Critias, state that Atlantis was destroyed by a series of violent catastrophes that were so severe that little remained of it afterward. This information provided by Plato, describing these cataclysms that occurred at the end of the last ice age, correlates strikingly well with Mesopotamian cuneiform tablets, ancient stories, biblical writings, and ice core data from Greenland, all of which provides a glimpse into what occurred long ago. These disasters led to the destruction of many of the pre-Diluvian civilizations that once thrived on the planet. Yet little about this information is ever discussed on an academic level and is still largely considered pseudo-archaeology by most mainstream experts. It's important to develop an understanding of how to objectively view facts and information accurately to develop logical conclusions. This is a necessary step for any good researcher to take who's searching for the truth. The famous detective, Arthur Conan Doyle, gave a profound quote that should act as the means for building this foundation of reason. He said, Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. Let those words resonate deep within you and decide for yourself what's real 
and what's simply a clever distraction from the truth. But for those on the serious path who want to rise above and transcend to a higher reality of existence, these teachings may provide the means to assist you on your difficult journey. Once the individual discovers the vast amount of evidence that exists, which challenges the entire paradigm we've been taught, their perspective about the universe, history, science, and religion often changes forever. <laughs>